A groundbreaking study by Wits University has identified two previously unknown breast cancer genes in black women, a major step forward in understanding how the disease affects African populations. Researchers say these genes have not been linked to breast cancer before, with genetic factors contributing to around 30% of breast cancer cases in South Africa. The findings underscore the urgent need for greater investment in genomic research focused on women of African ancestry. To unpack this further, I'm joined now by Dr. Matab Hyatt, who's a lead author of the study and researcher at the Sydney Brenner Institute for Molecular Bioscience at Wits University. Doc, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. How significant is this finding, especially among the African ancestry? Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so the, these findings are, are really quite significant because given um, breast cancer genetic studies in the past 20 years, um, sub-Saharan African populations have been understudied and they've been underrepresented. And so this is sort of the beginning of uh, us discovering which genetic factors do contribute to breast cancer development in, in sub-Saharan African black populations. Mm. So these are two new genes that w were never found before, but now have now been associated w with the disease. Does this mean that there's been an alteration over time with our genes and what could have led to this? Um, in, in a way, yes. So we know that African genetics, so um, sub-Saharan African people's genetics are different to non-African genetics. And so when you have results from a study like this one, like a genome-wide association study, and um, it's been done, say it's been done in a non-African population, often results from, from that study that's been done in a non-African population can't be translated to an African population. So the same uh, genetic variants that would have been discovered in a non-African population wouldn't necessarily be the same in an African population. And this is because African populations are older. Um, and so because they're older, they have uh, more genetic variation compared to non-African populations. And that is why we see this, this difference in, in, in genetic variation that may contribute to breast cancer. Mm. And you, did you speak of, of that, that change? What could have caused it over time? Uh, so just over time, there's general genetic mutations that occur right. um, naturally uh, in, in, in genomes over time. And so that's, so the disparity that we're seeing or the differences that we're seeing is just um, the difference between African populations, which are older, and non-African populations, which are, are newer, per se. Mm. So this particular sample was concentrated in the Soweto region, where you had over 2,400 participants. Some were South African women and other were, others were women from, from other parts of the African continent. Talk to us about the distinctions between those two and maybe even some of the similarities that then could also lead to breast cancer. Sure. So there were there were sort of two um, parts to our study. Um, the one part was doing the association analysis, so looking for genetic variation that contributes to breast cancer within women from Soweto, um, and this is where we found our the two genetic variants in in these two genes that uh, contribute to an increased risk of breast cancer. Mm. What we also did is we looked at other population, other African populations to see if there was an overlap, you know, to see if there was maybe um, within the same gene, were there any variants that also contributed to breast cancer that, that uh, were found in East or West or African American populations, sorry, East or West Africa or African American populations. And um, we, did, we didn't really find an overlap. We didn't find um, our variants that were in East or West Africa or African American populations. And um, this again speaks to just the incredible amount of genetic variation that exists in sub-Saharan Africa. So although it is, we're all, the populations are all African, there's still a lot of differences between East, West and South African populations. And um, that just means that we need to do more population specific mm. um, research. And those variations and those differences, do they have an impact in how you then treat the disease? Um, so for treatment, first first and foremost, I think um, identifying 
patients at high risk would be would be different. So based on on the mutations that are found in these particular populations, um, those specific variants would then be population specific. So um, if you were from East or West Africa, they would be uh, potentially very specific genetic variants that would increase your risk of developing breast cancer. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, and then the second, if if we do find, you know, population specific variation that does uh, linked to breast cancer, they could potentially be linked to how we approach treatment. Um, so it would just depend on what kind of gene mutations occur mm. and, and how we could then target uh, and, treatment going forward. And what did you find? Who is more at risk? Um, so in, in the South African black population, particularly from Soweto, because that's where our sample came from, uh, we do find we do find that that black women have um, present with an, a very aggressive form of cancer. So what we um, really looked at is we looked at um, the general population. So there are there are two kinds of breast cancers that uh, that you can find in terms of genetics. There's one that is inherited. So that's um, the one that, you know, if it's in your family, if your mom has it or aunt or even uncles, um, that's very, that's inherited. What we looked at is the general population. So what um, it would just be the, the combination of genetic variation that you would happen to have um, that could increase your risk. So it's not to say that a particular group is more at risk. So breast cancer is 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 very um, highly prevalent in South Africa. It's the second most common cancer in South African black women. Um, so it is already a high risk cancer. But in terms of who is at risk, it just depends on the combination of genetic variation that you would have. Mm. And, and would lifestyle also play a role or, or just also assist with regards to these different variations in finding that yes. DNA and, and these genes? Definitely. So you could have you could have a higher risk genetically for developing breast cancer, but your lifestyle also plays a role in, in you know, whether you develop the disease or how early you develop um, the cancer. So a healthy lifestyle, an active lifestyle and eating well um, really plays a role as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. You spoke earlier, Doc, about sub-Saharan studies um, being being understated over the years. I mean, for most breast cancer genetics research, they've often focused on European and Asian populations. And also, like you mentioned, the African ancestry would only be linked to that of African-American women who are largely of West African descent. W what would these findings contribute towards in terms of a greater understanding globally? Um, so one, it would highlight that you know, African resident African populations are different. And, and just because you find something um, from research in a non-African population doesn't mean it's applicable in an African population. Um, and to note is that this study, this genome-wide association study that we did, is the first uh, genome-wide association study for breast cancer in sub-Saharan African women. So we are at the beginning of this, and um, we, we will be furthering our investigation through a study called Confluence, which will be including more African populations in, in the, the study. Mm. And lastly, I mean, like you say, Doc, just that, that deepening knowledge of, of such diseases, what does it do in terms of the medical field as a whole, in terms of a direction that we're able to take, not only with discovery in terms of these diseases, but also with regards to treatment? So um, ideally, uh, a couple of years down the line, once we generate enough data, uh, we would like to see implementation of a, a screening tool called a polygenic risk score. So you could have someone come into a clinic, um, you take a little bit of their blood and you read their DNA. And um, based on which you know genetic variants they may have, that could it form how um, at risk they are of developing breast cancer. And so the higher the higher the risk, the more screening you would have to do. And so this would allow you to identify or catch the cancer before it gets too far. Um, and that makes it that would you know make it more treatable. All right. And so the earlier you catch your cancer, the, the, the easier it is to treat. Doctor, thank you so much and congratulations 
on this groundbreaking so discovery. Certainly do hope that we'll be getting more from you as well as your team. That was Dr. Matab Hayat, who's the lead author of the study and also researcher at the Sydney Brenner Institute for Molecular Bioscience at Wits University.